By the end of Jujutsu Kaisen, will it be better than Naruto? Nani? Can the inspired surpass the inspiration? That's the question I aim to answer today. And I know a lot of JJK fans already know that its writer, Gege Akatami, is probably more inspired by Bleach and Hunter x Hunter, but I wanted to make a video comparing it to Naruto because a lot of fans like to downplay or even flat out deny the similarities. Now, there are two camps when it comes to Naruto and Jujutsu Kaisen. There are those who say Jujutsu Kaisen is a generic copy of Naruto. I refer to this line of thought as hating ass ninjas. And there are those who say the comparisons are superficial. I refer to this camp as wrong ass ninjas. The truth about Naruto and Jujutsu Kaisen comparisons lie somewhere in the middle of these two camps and I plan on explaining what I mean before answering the question I presented at the start of this video. But before I get into specific details, I just wanted to say thank you for clicking on this video and please consider subscribing and becoming a short king. My friends and I are all short kings and when you subscribe, I consider you a friend. Being a short king is dope. So hit that button. Now let's get back into the video. I want to start by addressing why JJK isn't a generic copy of Naruto, but also why it couldn't exist in its current form without the inspiration of Naruto. Those are my cats, please excuse them. So there's this idea in literature called intertextuality, and to my understanding it's the idea that no story is 100% original anymore. In every story there will be a direct or indirect reference to another story because we are constantly being influenced. A direct reference could be something like Spider-Man No Way Home where Toby and Andrew Spider-Man made appearances or a Nemo plushie in the background of Monsters Incorporated. This type of intertextuality is an obvious reference that can't be disputed. An indirect reference, however, is more like how Matt Reeves' The Batman incorporates elements of the movie Seven or how Robert Pattinson's portrayal is inspired by Kurt Cobain. This is a more subtle style of intertextuality. So intertextuality is just a text's incorporation of another text. I bring this idea up because JJK utilizes both forms of referencing and I'd like to start with the direct or more obvious references to Naruto. First, there's a three-man squad with two male characters and one female character. The main character is a goofy guy possessed by a scary, powerful, evil entity. The rival is a quiet, black-haired character. And the third member is a girl. The mentor is even an overpowered, white-haired character. So how does Gege differentiate JJK from Naruto if at face value it copies these surface details to a T? Well here, the key word is subversion. Yes, Yuji has a powerful demon in him. He's got that dog in him, if you will, bestiality pause. Nani? But unlike Naruto and Kurama, there are never any hints that Sukuna and Yuji will ever get along and help each other. Sukuna is actually on demon time, and whenever he comes out, we as readers and watchers understand that. Megami looks like Sasuke, I, I guess. But his whole thing is that he has the potential of a prodigy, but he's a pussy. Whereas Sasuke, well, you know, he's, he's Sasuke. He, he's a prodigy, he knows it, and he's not afraid to show it. Oh shit, yeah, I, I, I guess I did just rhyme. But I'm not gonna do that corny thing where people- Before the Rona hit, I was keeping my distance. The way you chasing Sasuke got me feeling suspicious. Cause that ain't how the G's move. I never need that G's moves. To see your girl for new And I ain't talking see-through. Ninja please, you taking L, she taking D. She all about my rock, cause I'm all about my paper. I asked the girl who's better, she said you can all these scissor. Chick-fil-A, man I feel like Chick-fil-A. Cause you shadow clone my drip, and you craving my sauce, gay. Pause, let's end this battle easy for us, send you to your mom and i'll do what you couldn't cause i'm leaving with two arms and a bee you couldn't stop me cause i'm used to catching bombs and that's all tight cuz and before i forget the nobara subversion is just that she's not trash for 90 percent of the series unlike sakura and gege in general just writes female characters to be more interesting than kishimoto 
So, and then work that into me. Give your meat a good old rub. Now, on to the deeper level. Here we find indirect references to the themes of Naruto that people overlook or just flat out deny. In Naruto, many of the strongest people were those who pushed everything to the side and only focused on their goals and ideologies. The Uchiha were the strongest clan and they only reached their full potential when they killed the person who they were closest to. Ignore the Boruto lore for now. They literally embodied the idea of becoming the strongest through any means necessary. However, at the end, Naruto became the strongest, not just through hard work, but by having people to defend and having those same people back him up. So you see what I'm doing now. From the beginning of Jujutsu Kaisen, Gojo and Sukuna have pretty much preached that becoming the strongest means that you have to be selfish and cast everything else to the side. And we've seen it twice already in Gojo and Maki. Gojo, when he fought Toji, and Maki actually kind of went through multiple factors, but it started with Mai's death and her mentality switching. But the theme of strength is being explored through selfishness. However, as we get closer to the end of JJK, many people speculate that Yuji will become the new pinnacle of power, not just by becoming selfish, but through the idea of him embracing his kind nature. Obviously, the story hasn't ended yet, and Gage can stick to the idea that strength comes from being selfish, but like everything else in JJK, that would just make this a subversion of the trope of the power of friendship. But subversion or not, a subversion could not exist without a starting point to subvert in the first place. Meaning, would JJK exist in its current form if it didn't have the tropes of Naruto to flip on its head? Because I certainly don't think so. However, we still haven't answered the initial question of by the end of Jujutsu Kaisen, will it be better than Naruto? So before I give you my answer, I just want to preface it by saying I finished my script up to this point and just stopped writing for like two weeks because I couldn't come up with a definitive answer. Coming up with an answer, let alone an explanation for my answer, is probably the most difficult time I have ever had when writing a script because Naruto and Jujutsu Kaisen are just neck and neck. Because on one hand, Jujutsu Kaisen probably won't ever make me cry as hard or as much as Naruto did. JJK won't inspire me the same way Naruto persevering and finally winning over the village did. And Naruto has the advantage of nostalgia. It reminds me of a simpler time. A time when I could run around the gym with my hands behind my back and throw hand signs with my friends. I didn't care if the other kids called me a weeb because I was a fucking Giga Chad. Try again. But goddamn Jujutsu Kaisen just hits different. Yuji starts off with so much optimism and hope, but as he experiences more and more of his new life as a sorcerer, he's beaten down and he becomes more jaded. But he adapts. He's not the same as before, but he's gotta keep going. He's gotta get back up, and I relate to that. That's real as fuck. So if Naruto has the advantage of nostalgia, JJK has the advantage of relatability for me. It also has the advantage of time, because Jujutsu Kaisen is new. It was able to learn lessons from the previous generation of top anime. For example, Naruto has so much goddamn filler and the fudging amount of flashback sequences is actually insanity. I can't rewatch it because it's 80% stuff we've already seen or filler we don't care about. I've tried multiple times to rewatch it, but I couldn't. I, I always stop at Shippuden. Ayo! So this 80% trash is a result of the long-running weekly release format. The animators literally had to reuse animation to meet deadlines, and the show caught up to the manga so often, they had to give us filler so Kishimoto could finish the story. 
Jujutsu Kaisen doesn't have to deal with these issues because it follows a seasonal release schedule. This means they grind on one 24 episode season before they even think about working on the next. The time in between each season could be one year, it could be two, it could even be three. However, this trade-off is not only worth it for the lack of filler or reused animation, but we also get movie quality animation. I've probably rewatched the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen now seven times, and I'll probably rewatch the series as a whole multiple times over by the time it's over. So where do I land? And this part is not scripted because I am making a decision on the fly. If I had to say right now, in three seconds, which anime will be better. And I'm not talking about the manga because I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to read the Naruto manga. I'm not even going to lie. My choice would be Jujutsu Kaisen. Arigato. <laughs> hey, yo! So if it felt like this video was cut short, it's because it was. I stopped pretty much halfway through. I wrote like a six page script and I just didn't want to keep going because, you know, this 10 minutes already took like a week. So if this video flops, then I won't put out the second part. But if it does pretty well, I'll put out the second part. I'll work on it all week, try to get it out next week. So. Let me know what you guys think. In particular, I very much appreciate these two comments. Comments like these motivate me to keep going. Thank you, Obama-sama. And I'll put the other one up on screen. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.